is May 11th, just after 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, and you are looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket as it awaits liftoff from the SpaceX launch pad in approximately 12 minutes from now. Uh, welcome to today's live webcast of the Bangamandu Satellite One mission from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. My name is Tom Fredario, and we're back today for attempt number two of our Flock 5 Falcon 9 mission. As we mentioned yesterday, this is a particularly exciting launch as we have two very important milestones taking place. Uh, the first milestone is that the payload, Bangabandhu Satellite 1, will be the first official geostationary communication satellite for the nation of Bangladesh. The second milestone is that today's launch is the debut of a series of upgrades to the Falcon 9 rocket that we're calling Block 5. These upgrades are designed to allow us to reuse each Falcon 9 10 times or more and also reduce the time of refurbishment between flights. Today's Falcon 9 will deliver Bangabandhu Satellite 1 to Geostationary Transfer Orbit, also abbreviated as GTO. Afterwards, we'll be also be attempting to recover this first stage on our drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, which is currently stationed about 340 nautical miles downrange in the Atlantic Ocean. If successful, this will mark the 25th landing of a first stage rocket for SpaceX. And with less than 11, almost 11 minutes left to go, uh, let's check in with Michael for a quick status update on the rocket. Hi, I'm Michael Hammersley, a materials engineer in our avionics department, and welcome back for our second attempt of the first flight of our Block 5 Falcon 9. In the final minute of countdown yesterday, the Falcon 9 flight computer did its last series of checks, came across an abort signal from a ground system relay, and stopped the launch as the vehicle is designed to do. It turns out that this particular signal was an artifact of an earlier test sequence that was completed successfully, but did not properly reset. Uh, keep in mind that there are a thousand ways a launch can go wrong, and only one way it can go right, so the vehicle is designed to stop the countdown at the slightest hint of anything that seems off-nominal. The team has revised this particular test sequence to avoid this problem in the future, and the rocket and payload remain in great health. So Falcon 9 rolled out to the pad with the Bangabandhu Satellite 1 payload on Wednesday evening at about 8 p.m. local time, and it went vertical yesterday at roughly 8 a.m. local time. Uh, today, we went through the launch director's go, no-go poll, held at about T-2 hours. And one of the several changes to Block 5 is in how we load propellants. Uh, we use, still use a liquid kerosene fuel called RP-1, and our oxidizer is liquid oxygen. But instead of starting with our fuel load at T-70 minutes, we begin loading both RP-1 and liquid oxygen onto the first stage at T-35 minutes. Uh, those proceed in parallel until just a couple minutes before liftoff. Uh, we also start loading RP-1 onto stage 2 at T-35 minutes, but we let that complete and then add the liquid oxygen. Uh, that started at T minus 16 minutes. So, all told, that means that currently we're at about 95% full of fuel in stage one and 100% full in stage two, with liquid oxygen being at 90% uh, in stage one and about 60% in stage two. Uh, so as we've mentioned before, we're also planning on recovering Falcon 9's first stage on Of Course I Still Love You, 340 nautical miles southeast of Kennedy Space Center. And we're hoping to bring you live coverage of stage one during its descent. Otherwise, vehicle's healthy, payload is healthy, the range is a go. And though we're watching some, upper, uh, some strong upper altitude winds and some thick cloud layers, there's nothing stopping us on the weather front from launching today. Block 5 refers to a series of upgrades that we've made to Falcon 9 as part of our ongoing effort to make spaceflight more like commercial air travel is today. Uh, this version of Falcon 9 you can see on your screen is designed for 10 or more flights with very limited refurbishment, but should be capable of additional flights with further testing and possible additional refurbishment. Uh, some of the changes are actually very visible in this rocket, most notably the inner stage, this raceway cover down here, and the landing legs. Uh, with all of these parts used to be white, but now they're black, which is the natural cover color of our improved thermal protection material, which doesn't require painting like the cork that we previously used. It's highly flame resistant and also holds up better to the elements. In particular, it's hydrophobic, meaning that it repels water. In addition to these changes, we've also made changes to the nine Merlin 1D engines at the base of the Falcon 9 rocket right down here. The thrust of these Merlin 1D engines is increased from 176,000 pound force to 190,000 pound force at sea level, which represents approximately an 8% thrust increase. 
We've also changed the primary thrust structure that houses the engines, which we call the octaweb, down here, from a welded aluminum structure to a bolted structure. This greatly reduces the manufacturing and inspection burden and increases reliability and shortens the lead time towards production. Additional improvements have been made to the landing legs to support rapid post-landing vehicle recovery, and we've also upgraded the operational capability of, of components across the board. The ultimate goal of all these improvements is uh, to be capable of relaunching a flown booster within 24 hours with minimal refurbishment. That doesn't mean that we want to fly a rocket once per day, but it means that we could if we needed to. Now at the top of this rocket is the uh, nose cone structure at the very top. This is called the payload fairing, inside which is Bangamandu Satellite 1, the first Bangladeshi geostationary communication satellite for the country of Bangladesh. The satellite was built by Thales Alinas Foss of France and covers a wide variety of broadcast and telecommunication applications, including satellite television, internet access, and emergency communication services, and of course much more. The satellite will be operated by the Bangladesh Telecommunication Regulatory Commission, or BTRC, and is expected to last approximately 15 years on orbit. Bangabandhu Satellite 1 will stay protected inside that fairing uh, all the way up until about three and a half minutes into the flight. The fairing protects the satellite on ascent, but once we escape from its atmosphere, it's no longer needed and we pop off. Uh, we are not attempting to recover this fairing on today's mission, but it's something that we'll look forward to do in fewer future missions. So uh, with just about five minutes or six minutes left in the countdown, let's check in with Michael on how the rocket is doing. Uh, we're now just inside of T minus six minutes, and stage one and stage two are both almost fully loaded with a million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Uh, at this point, both stages are just about 100% of fuel. Uh, stage one is at 99% liquid oxygen and at 90% for stage two. Um, we'll continue topping off both stages until about T minus two minutes to keep the propellants as cold and therefore as dense as possible in order to fit as much propellant onto the vehicle as we can. Around the T minus seven minute mark, we began our engine chill procedure. The propellants are much colder than the engines, and so it's important to get the engines to the correct temperature beforehand by slowly flowing propellant through them. Uh, liquid oxygen in particular is so much colder that it would turn into a gas upon first contact, which would be a pretty hard start for the engine. Uh, the strong back cradle uh, is opening uh, and will slightly retract away from the rocket. Uh, the strong back is the uh, structure that's standing immediately next to top nine on your screen, uh, not the larger gray structure. Uh, it will uh, recline more fully as Falcon 9 is uh, And you heard that the strong back lower has, has begun. At T minus three minutes, uh, we'll be performing an engine wiggle. That's checking the thrust vector control system to make sure that the Merlin engines will be able to properly steer Falcon 9 during ascent. And at T minus 60 seconds, you'll hear that Falcon 9 is in startup, which means that the rocket's internal flight computers have taken over the countdown. One more interesting change for this mission relates to the Merlin engines themselves. Uh, in block four, the engines were used with a constant chamber pressure. Uh, because engine thrust depends on both the chamber pressure and external atmospheric pressure, uh, the block four engine's thrust would slowly increase by up to 10 or 15,000 pounds per engine during ascent. For block five, we'll be maintaining a constant thrust of 190,000 pounds until cutoff, which means we'll actually be slowly decreasing the engine's chamber pressures over time to compensate for decreasing atmospheric pressure. Otherwise, the drone ship is on standby in the Atlantic Ocean. The payload is healthy and go for launch. The range is also go for launch. And at this point, we're inside of T minus three minutes and getting pretty close to T zero. Strong back lower is ended, strong backs at 88.2 degrees. So let's listen in to the last couple minutes of terminal count.
stage two locks loads closed out. And Falcon Eyes on internal power. from now. Head back into chill. Uh, there will be three events in quick succession. The main engines will cut off, the two stages will separate, and the second stage will start its Merlin vacuum engine. Uh, what you heard is just beginning its own chill procedure. Some of the flicker from Merlin vacuum engine room as it uh, 
filter in the camera so that that's going to sort of interact with the top of the interstage there for a moment. Next major event is uh, the fairing deploy coming up in just a few seconds from now. That's the second stage that will be deploying its fairing. And there you see the, the fairings falling away behind. Uh, there's a Still, they're light, they're made of carbon fiber and aluminum honeycomb, but they still represent excess mass, so we, we uh, no longer need them once we get out of the atmosphere. Those of you just joining us, we had three uh, events in rapid succession. We had a main engine cutoff in that first stage, we had a stage separation event, and then we had a second stage light, uh, followed quickly then by a fairing separation. Everything's going great right now. Uh, Falcon 9 is looking uh, good. Uh, right now, let's go over what we can see on your screen. On the left-hand side, that's a camera mounted on the top of the first stage of the rocket, looking down towards the nine Merlin engines at the bottom. Uh, in that view, you can see those titanium grid fins. Uh, they slowly deployed just after stage separation. And those grid fins will allow the Falcon 9 first stage to guide itself back down towards the drone ship. Of course, I still love you. You can see uh, brief flashes of those cold gas thrusters as they guide, uh, pro provide additional control authority for that first stage. On the right-hand side of your screen is a camera mounted at the very bottom of the second stage looking down towards the Merlin vacuum nozzle. Uh, of course, at the very other end of that stage is the Bangamandu Satellite 1. Uh, right now, that Merlin vacuum engine is glowing red hot with those exhaust gases as it propels Bangamandu Satellite 1 into its final geostationary transfer orbit. Our Falcon 9 first stage today is going to perform two burn maneuvers in order to get back down towards the drone ship. Uh, the first burn is going to be an entry burn coming up in about 30 seconds. You'll be able to see that entry burn start on the left hand side of your screen. As a reminder, those uh, bursts of uh, clouds coming out of the Falcon 9 first stage on the left are those cold gas thrusters that, in addition to the titanium grid fins, allow it to provide or to control itself as it comes back down through the atmosphere. There's the startup of the entry burn. At this point, the Falcon 9 first stage is actually only about 10% of the mass that it was in the pad. So it's actually pretty empty of fuel and liquid oxygen right now. So this entry burn is only going to last a few more seconds. Cutting off. And there it is. As that first stage gets closer and closer to the surface of the Earth, uh, we should be able to see features such as clouds, waves, and eventually the outline of our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. It looks like there may be some condensation forming on the inside of the camera, but uh, we should get some good, uh, good video. Um, on the right-hand side of your screen, again, that second stage is still continuously uh, propelling Bangamandu Satellite 1 into orbit. Uh, looks like we may have lost video from the cameras on that first stage momentarily. Uh, we'll see if we can get them back. Uh, it, one thing that is unique about this mission uh, is that the second stage engine cutoff is going to happen just before the landing, coming up in about 20 seconds or so.
see in your mission status bar at the very bottom, the second stage engine cutoff and landing are right on top of each other, so uh, be prepared for those two events to happen in quick succession. So it looks like we don't have a great video signal with that first stage right now, but we do have confirmation that the landing burn has started. Those landing legs should be deploying very soon. There it is. <laughs> and After a brief interruption in the video signal, uh, we are looking at the 25th recovered first stage of a Falcon 9 vehicle. Uh, what a great sight. Uh, that is a camera on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Uh, the crowd's going nuts here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne. Uh, while all that was happening, While all that was happening, uh, we did have a successful second stage engine cutoff of that uh, second stage carrying Bangamandu Satellite 1. Uh, so uh, while we're all very excited here at SpaceX to recover our 25th booster, uh, the primary mission is still to bring Bangamandu Satellite 1 into geostationary transfer orbit. Uh, right now, everything's looking good from that second stage. Uh, it's going to coast for about 17 minutes or so. We're not going to be with you for all of that. We're actually going to just look at a simulation of where that second stage is. However, we will come back in approximately 9 or 10 minutes to guide you through the rest of the satellite deployment. Welcome back. We're about 10 minutes into the coast phase and awaiting the restart of that second stage engine to move us out of the parking orbit into the target, targeted orbit. Uh, as we mentioned, the launch of this satellite represents a significant milestone for the country of Bangladesh. For today's launch, they've put together a video that covers a brief history of Bangladesh, as well as the importance of the satellite currently making its way towards the final orbit. It's, current, it's followed by a special message from the Prime Minister of Bangladesh to the Bangladeshi people. The country of dreams. Our dearest motherland, Bangladesh. The country of resilience, a land of granary. Endowed by nature serene and green enigma. We have earned the 21st February, the International Mother Language Day. We have emancipated our independence, sacrificing millions of lives. The man who enthused the spirit of independence is the father of the nation, Bangabundhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. With his bold oratory, he led the nation aware of their rights, of the final emancipation. The independence. The noble dream of Bangabundhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was centered on this country and its people. In tune with his great passion for the country, his illustrious daughter, the country's honorable prime minister, Sheikh Hasina, is leading the country through irresistible surge of success. Bangladesh is today the global model of success in agriculture, textile and apparel. Modernization of leather industry, many other key industries, trade and commerce, communication infrastructure, all on the journey upon the highway of development. Leaving behind the stigma of poverty, Bangladesh is elevated from LDC status to a developing entity and Sheikh Hasina's epoch-making success towards a digital Bangladesh bears the glowing tribute for the country's galactic epitome, the Bangabundhu Satellite. 
Bongobuntu sowed the seed of the country's cosmic entity through commissioning of satellite ground station at Bed Bunia. 44 years after that, his able daughter, the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, along with his grandson, the Prime Minister's Honorable Advisor for Information Technology, Shoji Bwajid Joy, made a history of launching the country's first satellite, named after the father of the nation. This project of Post and Telecommunication Department, being run by BTRC, was approved in 2015. According to the agreement with Thales Alenia, the satellite agency of France, the skilled technicians stepped up constructing this satellite in 2015 and was completed by November 2017. Then another agreement to launch it was accorded with SpaceX of the United States for launching spacecraft Falcon 9. জাতির জনক বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিবুর রহমান বাংলাদেশকে তার শাসনকালে টেলিযোগাযোগের যে জগতে প্রবেশ করিয়েছিলেন সেটি আজকে একটি নতুন মাত্রা পেল একটি নতুন মাইল ফলক আমাদের সামনে উপস্থাপিত হলো माननीय প্রধানমন্ত্রী ডিজিটাল বাংলাদেশ বিনির্মাণের যে স্বপ্ন সেই জায়গায় এটি আমাদের একটি নতুন ইতিহাস আমরা তৈরি করতে যাচ্ছি এই স্যাটেলাইটের জন্য আমরা প্রত্যেকটা বাংলাদেশের প্রতিটি অঞ্চল কে আমরা টেলিকমিউনিকেশন সার্ভিস দিতে আর অর্থাৎ ডিজিটাল ডিভাইস আমরা দূর করে ফেলতে পারব স্থল বন্যা জলোচ্ছ্বাসে যখন নাকি অন্যান্য কমিউনিকেশন যখন ডিসঅ্যাডাপ্টেড হয়ে যাবে তখন আমাদের এটা কিন্তু কাজ করবে দ্য গ্রাউন্ড স্টেশন অফ বঙ্গবন্ধু স্যাটেলাইট 1 হ্যাজ বিন বিল্ট এট গাজিপুর উইথ এ প্যারামাউন্ট স্ট্রাকচারাল আর্কিটেকচার এন্ড ইকুইপড উইথ দ্য মোস্ট অ্যাডভান্সড টেকনোলজি দিস গ্রাউন্ড স্টেশন ইজ নাও অল সেট টু নেভিগেট দ্য স্যাটেলাইট it can simultaneously be navigated through two stations commissioned at Ghazipur and Bed Punia. Bongobuntu satellite will be able to bring countries like Bangladesh, India, other SARC countries, even the Philippines, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. It will simultaneously cater to DTH, VSAT and broadband services earning for the country a huge revenue in foreign currency. It will be possible to develop a huge number of sectors like telemedicine, e-education, DTH, defense, and disaster management. Especially, major breakthrough in telecommunication and broadcast services through Bongobuntu satellite. Following the footsteps Set forth by the father of the nation, Bangladesh is going to enter into the endless space with hosting the country's first galactic entity, the Bongobuntu satellite. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum. Biro Desh Bashi, Ebang. বিশ্বের বিভিন্ন স্থান থেকে এই মুহূর্তে যারা বঙ্গবন্ধু স্যাটেলাইট এক উৎক্ষেপণ কার্যক্রম দেখছেন তাদের সবাইকে আমি আন্তরিক শুভেচ্ছা জানাচ্ছি আজ আমাদের প্রিয় মাতৃভূমি বাংলাদেশ এবং বাঙালি জাতির জন্য একটি অত্যন্ত আনন্দ ও গৌরবের দিন বাংলাদেশের অব্যাহত অগ্রযাত্রা ধারাবাহিকতায় আজকে যোগ হচ্ছে আরও একটি মাইল ফলক বঙ্গবন্ধু স্যাটেলাইট এক উৎক্ষেপণের মধ্য দিয়ে আজ আমরা মহাকাশে বাংলাদেশের পতাকা উত্তোলন করছি আজকের এই গৌরবময় মুহূর্তে আমি শ্রদ্ধার সাথে স্মরণ করছি সর্বকালের সর্বশ্রেষ্ঠ বাঙালি জাতির পিতা বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিবুর রহমানকে যিনি চব্বিশ বছরের রাজনৈতিক সংগ্রাম এবং জেল জুলুম নির্যাতন অগ্রাহ্য করে আমাদের উপহার দিয়েছেন স্বাধীন সার্বভৌম বাংলাদেশ আমি স্মরণ করছি মহান মুক্তিযুদ্ধের সকল শহীদ এবং নির্যাতিত মা বোনকে জাতির পিতা বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিবুর রহমানের স্বপ্ন ছিল বাংলাদেশ বিশ্বের বুকে একটি মর্যাদাশীল দেশ হিসেবে প্রতিষ্ঠিত হবে তিনি অনুধাবন করেছিলেন 
বহির বিশ্বের সঙ্গে অব্যাহত যোগাযোগ রক্ষা করতে না পারলে অগ্রগতি ও প্রগতির পথে এগিয়ে যাওয়া সম্ভব হবে না এজন্য স্বাধীনতার মাত্র তিন বছরের মাথায় উনিশশো সালে তিনি রাঙামাটির বেদবুনিয়ায় প্রথম উপগ্রহ ভূকেন্দ্র স্থাপন করেন যার সাহায্যে তথ্য উপাত্ত আদান প্রদানের মাধ্যমে বহির্বিশ্বের সঙ্গে বাংলাদেশের সরাসরি যোগাযোগ স্থাপনের সুযোগ তৈরি হয় আজ আমরা জাতির পিতার সেই স্বপ্ন বাস্তবায়নে আরেক ধাপ এগিয়ে যাচ্ছি নিজস্ব উপগ্রহ বঙ্গবন্ধু এক উৎক্ষেপণের মধ্য দিয়ে তথ্য প্রযুক্তির সঙ্গে আজ যুক্ত হতে যাচ্ছে স্যাটেলাইট বা উপগ্রহ আজ থেকে আমরাও স্যাটেলাইট ক্লাবের গর্বিত সদস্য হলাম প্রবেশ করলাম এক নতুন যুগে এই স্যাটেলাইট দিয়ে বাংলাদেশ ভারত নেপাল ভুটান শ্রীলঙ্কা মালদ্বীপ ফিলিপাইন ইন্দোনেশিয়া পাকিস্তান আফগানিস্তান তাজিকিস্তান কাজাকিস্তান এবং উজবেকিস্তানের অংশ বিশেষে সেবা প্রদান করা সম্ভব হবে ডাক ও টেলিযোগাযোগ বিভাগের অধীন বিটিআরসি থেকে প্রকল্প গ্রহণ করে বঙ্গবন্ধু স্যাটেলাইট এক নির্মাণ ও উৎক্ষেপণের ব্যবস্থা গ্রহণ করা হয়েছে ডাক ও টেলিযোগাযোগ বিভাগ বিটিআরসি প্রকল্প এবং স্যাটেলাইট কোম্পানির কর্মীকে আমি আন্তরিক ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি আমি নির্মাতা ও উৎক্ষেপণকারী উভয় প্রতিষ্ঠানের কর্মীদের ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি ধন্যবাদ জানাই ফ্রান্স ও মার্কিন যুক্তরাষ্ট্রের সরকার ও জনগণকে এই কাজে সহযোগিতার হাত বাড়িয়ে দেওয়ার জন্য পাশাপাশি ধন্যবাদ জানাই রাশিয়াকে তাদের কক্ষপথ আমাদের ভাড়া দেওয়ার জন্য প্রিয় দেশবাসী আপনারা সকলে দোয়া করবেন যাতে বঙ্গবন্ধু স্যাটেলাইট এক সফলভাবে উৎক্ষেপণের মাধ্যমে আমরা আমাদের কাঙ্ক্ষিত লক্ষ্য পূরণ করতে পারি সবাইকে আবারও ধন্যবাদ জানিয়ে আমি বঙ্গবন্ধু স্যাটেলাইট একের শুভ উৎক্ষেপণ ঘোষণা করছি মহান আল্লাহ তালা আমাদের সহায় হন Welcome back. Uh, we're in the last few minutes of uh, today's launch. Uh, we had a successful launch at 4.14 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, great stage separation. We caught the first stage on the drone ship, of course, I Still Love You. And the second stage had an excellent burn. Maintained great uh, chamber pressure through the whole time. Uh, and during the coast period, it's been keeping its propellants well settled in their tanks, which is important for uh, uh, getting the second stage, its second burn. That's coming up uh, just a few seconds from, oh, happening right now. Uh, this burn is going to last for a total of about one minute, and it's going to raise the orbit from being just a couple hundred kilometers above the surface of the Earth into a geostationary transfer orbit, where the maximum altitude is 36,000 kilometers uh, above the surface of the Earth. So uh, in these few minutes before separation at this point, only a couple more things are going to be happening. We're bleeding our propellant lines down uh, to bring down the pressure in the plumbing uh, after the burn is complete, that is, uh, which is, should be happening uh, in about 15 or 20 seconds from now. stage completed its second burn. Let's take a few moments to make sure that we've entered the expected orbit. Good final orbit. And we've gotten confirmation that we are in a good final orbit. Uh, so now uh, there are only a couple minutes before that payload deployed, and that's when we're bleeding down the propellant lines to bring down the pressure in the plumbing. Uh, the propellant that used to be in those lines, we're giving some time to uh, float away from the vehicle. Uh, after that, we'll slowly spin the stage and payload to a rotation of one and a half degrees per second rotation uh, And then we'll release the satellite and let it gently float away on its geostationary transfer. Uh, that deploy event is going to be coming up in just about...
about uh, four minutes from now. Welcome back. For those of you just joining us, we are only about 30 seconds away from the deployment of Bangabandhu Satellite 1. On the right-hand side of your screen, you can see a camera view uh, of the satellite itself from the very bottom. It's currently attached to the top of that second stage by way of a payload adapter fitting. In about 10 seconds, we should be able to see that payload adapter fitting release, and Bangabandhu Satellite 1 will be on its way. Let's watch that. And you saw it uh, on your screen, uh, we successfully deployed Bungabundi Satellite 1, and it's on its way to geostationary, in the final geostationary orbit. Uh, so that brings, uh, that brings today's mission to a close. Uh, uh, so quick recap of the mission. We started launch at, or we launched at 4.14 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we successfully separated the two stages, caught the first stage, uh, had two burns of the second stage with a coast period in between, and as you just saw, uh, Bangabandhu Sat is floating, uh, Bangabandhu Satellite 1 is floating away. Uh, as you can tell, uh, the crowd here at SpaceX is extremely excited. Uh, it's a big day for both us and for the nation of Bangladesh. At this point, we're going to bring the coverage of the webcast to a close. Uh, SpaceX would like to thank our customer, Palasalania Spas, and their customer, the Bangladesh Telecommunication Regulatory Commission. Uh, we'd also like to thank the U.S. Air Force, the Range, and the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting the launch. And of course, thank you, the viewer, for tuning in today. Uh, if you'd like to join us, uh, check us out at spacex.com slash careers to contribute to some of the work that we're doing. Uh, otherwise, look for updates on our next mission on our social platforms uh, or our website. Uh, thank you again.